Hello and welcome. I hope you're safe and well. Today's exciting episode is of a pattern haul of spring patterns. So some dresses, some shirts and some denim jeans. Oh, and shirt dresses. Oh, and <laughs> vintage Vogue ball gown, which of course you can wear in all seasons, everywhere. So practical. Anyway, it's a pattern haul. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So I have finally, reluctantly, put my Kandinsky jacket over on the rack. I think it's finished, sort of. I mean, I might do some more pale pink beads on the um, white patch on the back. But anyway, it's over on the rack for now. So it's time to do something different. And um, I've got two jackets that I haven't finished. I've got the wine coloured floral one, as well as the vintage knit one. It's actually a tweed jacket, but I don't know. I think it looks like a vintage knit to me. Uh, so yeah, I've done a lot of the beading, but not all of it. And I've done a lot of the episode. Like I filmed everything I've done so far and I've edited up into the first like two thirds or three quarters of the episodes. I just have to finish it now. <laughs> And then uh, then you'll be able to see it. And this one, I have to find some more flowers first, but I've put them away in a box <laughs> and all the brown boxes, the cardboard boxes look the same. So yes, it might take me a while to find those flowers, but I'm nothing if not determined. So I will do them eventually. But for today, we're going to look at the other half of the patterns that I got the other week so these are the springish ones so you've already seen the coats and the jackets and these ones oh I put down my a couple of floral fabrics so it looks all very spring so in one half of the world it's autumn obviously and the other half it's spring but you know brown <laughs> orangey brown flowers covering both so first up we have a shirt dress I think this dress is adorable so it's simplicity 8014 I do have like a, at least a dozen different shirt dresses but I don't know they're all slightly different colors slightly different I love this yellow sort of yellowy green one it's um it looks very vintage but I don't think I'd do a mandarin collar I just think that particular illustration and the one that she's wearing the denim oh it's on a denim floral but anyway um the background fabric I like the one that she's wearing but I don't like those sort of shirt end bits at the bottom of the skirt but I do absolutely love the top so I think I'd do the top as a bodice and do the skirt like this one that patchwork pink and green one that I made out of scraps of fabric in was it August or September last year so yeah I really love the bodice part of it I also think I'll probably make it up as shirts and I like that it's got like um, short sleeves three quarters half sleeves three quarter sleeves and long sleeves so I think I'll I mean I've definitely got enough fabric to do one of each but yes it looks nice from the pattern so I think and um yeah my butt's probably a bit too big to do a, a long shirt like that as a dress I need a fuller skirt than that I think otherwise it just draws attention to the bits I don't want to get harassed for sort of thing and this this is a, such a beautiful pattern Vogue 1950 she just looks gorgeous in this it's so chic and um I do love it on her but I don't like a center back zip personally I think if I wanted a dress like this I would do it as a side zip um, to make it actually vintage but I think for me what I'll do is just make the top as like a sort of one of those short jackets that you wear to a garden party over a summer dress I think I might do that I might sort of lengthen it a little bit because a bodice is usually more cropped because you have to um, sort of allow for the weight of a full skirt which sort of brings it down a bit so I'll probably add an inch or two to the bottom like lengthen it a bit but still I think it'll be a really cute bolero jacket alternatively you could turn it into a shirt dress and have sort of the buttons not just in the bodice but also going down the entire skirt I think that would look really beautiful so we have a Butterick shirt but they sent me the wrong size I guess I could make not pre-wash my fabric 
and use fabric that shrinks a lot and then I know <laughs> I hope for the best but yeah I'll probably try and send it back and ask them to send me a new one anyway I just thought it looked sort of vintage-ish and I liked it the cut of it so and I like that it can also be without sleeves short sleeves and long sleeves so yes again I I think I will make some shirts but I also like the idea of making it the top of a shirt dress so that's Butterick B6924 and yeah it just I don't know there's something about it that looks a bit vintagey and that's what I liked about it and that's why I got it. Next up we have speaking of garden parties we have something that looks very spring summer it's Simplicity 9541 and it's a sort of really baggy loose jacket plus two dresses. The dresses are kind of just sacks with <laughs> straps on them not that that's a bad thing in the cooler months you can just put um, a dress a pullover dress over your yoga pants and a t-shirt or a long sleeve t-shirt and then in the summer months it's nice and breezy but the reason I got it was this jacket I have got so many scraps of cotton print fabrics and I thought I'd make a that would that jacket would make a good patchwork one so maybe a reversible one because it looks like it might be a bit fluttery if it's just one weight of fabric but if you do two sides and make it reversible then it's got a little bit more weight to it and it might sit better so that's what I was thinking with that one next we have a little outfit simplicity 9610 I like the blue shirt at the top I again I just think this looks very vintage but also the cropped one that she's wearing I wouldn't wear it as a shirt but again I think it lo would look absolutely adorable as the top of a um, shirt dress so yeah I think I'll uh, I'll sort of make it a pull-on dress and um yeah with a sash around it and then the skirt will be again like the pink and green one really nice full skirt I'm not going to make the trousers I don't think <laughs> or the shorts but I do like the shirt I'm not going to do the peephole thing in the shirt either just the plain shirt and um yeah I just think it looks really vintage but there's definitely a lot of options on there for different people. But I just like the plain shirts. And then next we have two, I guess they're quite similar, but they've got slight differences. Two pairs of denim jeans. Um, I've just, it never occurred to me that there were jeans patterns. And then I saw them and I was like, oh, okay. So um, they look like they're from last century. But I don't care. I like boot cut jeans, probably because I wear actual heeled boots with my jeans. This one has straight leg boot cut and tapered, and that's B6800. And the other one is more of a flared leg, and that's B6840. So, um, and the one with lots of options has a low rise waistband, whereas, no. Sorry, the one with lots of option is sort of a mid waistband, whereas the one with flared leg is a low rise. So I like the low rise waistband because, you know, I just like practical things. I know a lot of people love those super high waistbands because they think it sucks in their gut, but I would rather do a few sit ups and have jeans I can actually bend down and pick stuff up in. So, um, yeah. And so I'm going to make them boot cut. So this one here, you can see from the illustrations, that's sort of more boot cut. And then the one on the left is more flared, but it's got the low rise um, waistband. So I'm sort of going to mix and match. And yes, I, I hear these disaster nightmare stories where people do like 15 different fittings for their je denim jeans before they actually fit. But those are skinny jeans and uh, I'm yet uh, each their own but I'm definitely never making skinny jeans for myself so um yeah so um just dark blue denim is my favorite for jeans but yeah uh, so that's why I got them I'm not going to make them immediately but I don't know whether they'll I know boot cut jeans and low rise jeans aren't that popular so I thought I'd get them before they go out of print and next we have a blazer it's McCall's 7818 and it's all different sizes 
and like extra small to extra large and it's unisex. So um, if you've got a large bust, that's not a good thing. But if you just um, kind of flat or regular size, then it's sort of in that boyfriend jacket genre where it's a little it's supposed to be a little oversized which yeah I'm not sure I'll make a mock-up and go from there I'll probably have to make it a size smaller just because the boyfriend look I don't know I don't have the shoulders to wear something too baggy but yeah I thought I would do um I've got a couple of different jacquard fabrics and like the this one with that the um this floral one that the jacket pattern is sitting on and but I've also got some denims that are um I've got another camouflage denim and I've got this absolutely gorgeous floral that's sort of a it's it's a robust cotton but I think I'd still back it with another fabric if I use that and yeah so I thought I'd do something that's printed rather than a plain one just because with blazers you can't really bead them but I want it to be interesting in some way so yeah I'll probably end up using a patterned or printed fabric after I've done the mock-up and worked out what size it's going to be and then next oh we have the two I think we're down to the last two these are my oh they're so beautiful they're vintage Vogue patterns so this one is Vogue 1963 and it's a ball gown. I know it's not practical and or anything like that, but she's also wearing a tiara, which is absolutely awesome. I once bought myself a tiara from um, Las Vegas. I love how tacky Las Vegas is. I don't know why, but yeah, I just love it. I think I like the authenticity. It's just so proud of what it is. Anyway, so this dress consists of a corseted bodice, an underskirt and an overskirt. I think I would, I like the corseted bodice, but I would wear it over t-shirt jeans and maybe wear the overskirt as well. I don't think I'd do the underskirt. It's a bit much, but yeah, I absolutely love it. And I don't know, some patterns you just want to buy because they're just so cool. And yeah, I, I really don't like formal wear at all. When I was young, I worked in a floral shop doing um, bridal flowers you know working on really expensive really huge weddings and um, every few months you have these bridal shows and um, yeah so I, I absolutely hate everything formal but you know I still like the pattern and this one here I bought for the little capelet because Audrey Hepburn I forget what movie it is but she wears this absolutely darling capelet with this beautiful dress and well I think she looks gorgeous but also I think embellishing a capelet will be much easier than doing a jacket because jackets each arm and each front piece and back piece they're also three-dimensional and fitted whereas a capelet is I think it would be much easier to embellish it and then just hand stitch a few seams together so that was my thinking oh and the dress with this it sort of looks like a top and a skirt but it's actually a dress so I got out the instructions and so it's a hybrid mix of what you expect from a simplicity or a big four pattern instruction set but also they've got the vintage vogue actual authentic like original instructions which is interesting but I still couldn't figure out what they did but what it is is when you cut out the bodice piece it's actually like really long and then you turn up the hem and then it there's an egg the hem is extra long so it drops down and it meets the skirt as well it's a little bit confusing because it's sort of the way the illustrations go it looks like you do a lining for it but then you look at the pattern pieces and it's got a facing for the bodice which if you do a lining you do a lining instead of a facing it's either or so yeah it's just weirdly written 
But um, I mean, I wasn't reading. I was just like skipping through, skimming and trying to find. So what I mean is, so this is what the, the top bit is the bodice and it's extra long. And so instead of just folding up a tiny bit to do the hem, you actually fold up a little bit to do the hem, then drop the rest of it down. And then the bottom bit there joins the skirt. And it's so, yeah, your bodice piece is really long. And that's how it looks like a crop top and a skirt, but it's actually all one dress in the end. So mystery solved. You didn't even know it was a mystery. Anyway, so yeah, mainly I got this for the cape, but I don't know. The dress is interesting and it definitely looks pretty. I don't think a square square neck that, that's, that is that deep necessarily looks good on too many people. And my skin is super white, so I definitely think it won't look good on me. But it is a beautiful vintage dress. So there we go. Ten patterns, a mix of absolutely gorgeous aspirational vintage ones and some really practical ones like jeans and shirts um, some dresses and even a blazer. So yeah, lots of um, shirt dresses in my future as well as a few shirts. I think I'll have to actually finally get around to making some shirts and maybe some skirts and a summer um, yeah, cotton jacket as well. A reversible one I think I'll do with that like different patchworks or maybe one side will be solid and the other side will be patchwork. We shall see. And definitely, yeah, shirt dresses for shawzies. Anyway, that is it for this pattern haul. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've been inspired to rifle through your patterns or um, go on to the Simplicity site and earmark some ones you want. If you want some free patterns, I know that Mood Fabrics has a section called Society and it's got free patterns that you can download. I just, the idea of having to print things out and stick them together just frustrates me. So I would rather pay, wait until there's a sale and buy a few, um, uh, spend a few dollars per pattern on them, but each their own. So yeah, I I still have to finish these. It's so much fun doing something new though. But yes, it's definitely time uh, that I went back to these two and finally finish them because, oh, they're so close. And then I have all these silk linings to make for a whole bunch of jackets. Anyway, that's a problem for a future me. Thanks again for watching and I hope you've been inspired to rifle through your pattern collection. Oh my gosh, my patterns are in a mess at the moment. I rifled through them to find a, a particular jacket one and I sort of, yeah, <laughs> a little too hurriedly put them all back in the box and now they're sort of not in any order whatsoever. So I definitely need a another pattern combine. It's well and truly, I think it's been three or four months since the last one. So definitely time to do that again. Anyway, thanks again for watching and happy sewing.